Uh, I have tried my best to involve my my co-study uh, group uh, workers uh, that has been formulating these recommendations which have been proposed to the PCC. I have made a lot of efforts to involve them. Once uh, on the 7th of Jan, when I have invited all our 115 or so unit holders to come and discuss friendly also with a tea in the, in the hand on these matters, maybe also enlarging a little bit the scope, not to be focusing only on the financial aspect, but on, on the need of taking care better of the volunteers' guidelines in general. Um, and at this uh, meeting, there has been only, uh, from the study group, there has been only um, entry service representatives who came to participate in the discussions um, that uh, Nathalie and Inga Marie and a few others in came. And um, for this uh, presentation, for this meeting, there has been a lot of um, interactions by email all the, today because I have insisted also, seeing that uh, we were uh, invited to discuss within Krishna's uh, place, to also um, uh, come and also explain the reasons of this policy, which are more embodied and explainable by financial people. Because they, they are the ones who can explain and uh, present the realities that they see from their point of view, from their uh, viewpoint, which is the larger scale of our real economy, our real finances, our real balances between the budgets and so on. So I am not the best person to... But Dominic, before, you, before we start, because for me, this everyone going to have an opinion. As a volunteer, you'll have a, a, a point of view. As the Savi coordinator, you'll have a vision. As a BCC person, you'll have a vision. Personally, I feel that this thing about the volunteer is a symptom of something much deeper in the way of our functioning. And we have to look at this thing as an example, otherwise it's too abstract to look at the, of the, 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 the problems that we, that we are facing of a, a very centralized control in our community. But uh, I, I, was, uh, I, was, I was hoping, if you don't mind, that we just start this meeting for the benefit of everyone, just by reading this letter again, because it, that letter was an instigating factor for, um, exactly. So I'll read this letter, mm -hmm. and, um, and uh, then we, we can, and if you don't mind, give me two minutes. I just want to open up this topic, and then we can go into the subject okay. from, everyone's, from everyone's particular point of view, you know? It was my, not my intention to come into a particular point of view, but just to, to set up uh, the context of the, this controversial policy, to yeah. explain a little bit how it happened and why. Yeah. This is so much. Okay. So if you don't, is it okay? Is it okay? I'll read this letter yeah, first. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. So I'll just read this letter. This is a letter that I published on the on the Oronet, oh. and I published also in the Oroville today. And in, in the, sorry, not in the today. In the Oroville News and Notes. No, I didn't get to you guys. No, it has actually gotten to us. Alan hasn't contacted you. We'd like to publish it. Really? Well, we can talk about this. Okay, well, good. I'm happy to find it. So it says, I came to, it's a, little, uh, it's a little story, you know, to try and make people understand. I came to Oroville in January 92, after four years at the J. Krishnamurti School in UK. I had discovered Mother and Sri Aurobindo and Masanobu Fukuoka, and I knew Oroville was to be my home. I searched out Annapurna, and I told Thomas I wanted to live here. He <coughs> said, come for a few days and we will see. I came, I stayed. I remember I went to the entry group and I said to them in Bharat Nivas that I wanted to become an Aurovillian. They said, how do you know? I said, I just, I know. And they, I, I had no money. I was working full time at Annapurna.